Hello and welcome to today's news analysis. We are doing the Indian Express Papers Chandigarh edition. Now in today's uh, news analysis, I figured out a lot of means based topics which have to be done. So one, I'm covering the pest management, integrated pest management. So this is very important from GS3 point of view. Then in the editorial opinion section, there was a news article concerning the river water dispute concerning Kaveri. Now this, I have linked it with the overall scheme of things under the Interstate River Water Disputes Act, right? So I'm combined the two topics over here. Then there is one on household savings. The household savings are coming down. The news article provides us some information, some reasons as to why it is coming down. I have added the aspect of how is it of how it is of concern to our economy, broad economy. Likewise, I am discussing in detail personality rights. Uh, the news article it refers to as publicity rights over the Anil Kapoor's uh, case concerning Jakas. Okay, then today I am covering this type of article also from uh, Mr. Ram Madhav. This is about comparing Gandhi and Ambedkar on the caste issue. So the a question has already been asked in 2015 on the issue of untouchability. Where do, where do these two stalwarts stand? So I'm going to cover this. Then in the explained section, there is a mention, there is a big, you know, uh, uh, explainer or image actually about the illicit economy. So here I'm going to explain to you a very good in insight on illicit economy from uh, internal security point of view. Questions are asked repeatedly on that topic. So link between uh, illicit economy, money laundering and organized crime, how it is bad for the country, so all that in a very short summarized way. This will help you. And lastly, there is a news on core sector. Okay, so all this we are going to discuss and there are more actually to be covered like this news. Now before starting, let me tell you, we have a mentorship course. It is at a very affordable price of 6,000 rupees. I have checked, I'm surprised it is at 24,000, 25,000 rupees, somewhere 40,000 also. So you get uh, answer writing practice. I anyways actually tell you through the news analysis, but I'll provide you evaluation, weekly tests, uh, coverage of static as well as dynamic topics. And anytime, not weekly, not fortnightly, anytime you can reach me uh, one to one on doubt clearance if you want me on call so 7 to 9 pm otherwise on whatsapp anytime and any test series you have uh, you are referring to you have subscribed that also will be discussed now coming back to the news analysis so the first uh, news is about um, the age of consent you know the 22nd law commission which is headed by Justice, ex, retired Justice Ritu Raj Avasti, it was to look into the issue of age of consent. Age of consent is with reference to uh, sexual intercourse. So age of consent at the moment in our country is 18 years. So if somebody engages in uh, sexual intercourse below that age, one may be punished, right? It is a criminal offense under, the post, uh, under this law. Uh, protection of children from sexual offenses act now if you look at other countries of the world the age of consent is lower than this so it, there so there was a case that why not lower this limit of 18 years so the law commission has looked into this issue it has pointed out the issue of sexual curiosity amongst the adolescents population and also that there may be consensual uh, 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 sexual uh, intercourse uh, at, at an earlier age also. So they have raised this issue, but they have still recommended that 18 years is the most appropriate age. So they have raised the issue of sexual curiosity as well as a tacit approval among children. Now in case if, um, if an age group of 16 to 18 years emerge, in that case, the law commission recommends that there should be softer approach of the uh, criminal system so softer approach needs to be taken there has to be a guided judicial discrimination in that matter 
So software approach, lenient approach needs to be taken. Next news, US, this is about the Canada issue. Okay, so US had shared assessment on this issue with India, right? So that is what uh, the external affairs minister Jay Shankar had said. Now what should, so right, the so same old issues are there. Now where did they meet? So meeting, so Mr. Jay Shankar is in Washington, DC as part of the 2 plus 2 forum. So 2 plus 2 forum is between US and India, uh, US and India, where the defense minister, two representatives of India, defense, uh, defense and uh, the foreign minister, likewise, the defense and the foreign of the US, same counterparts come together and discuss. Right, next news. China remains belligerent its pursuits pursuits are predatory says army chief so let me sum up as to what all things have been covered in this speech it gives us a insight about national security right so one thing he is pointing out towards the issue of china and he is saying that china is getting more and more bold it is not it is not caring about other countries sensitivities so that we see in that encroachment during the Galwan time, the Ladakh issue, so that we see. In fact, he says that even now, even with all the dispute that is going on, there are certain buffer areas which have been referred to as grey zone. So China is trying to claim as much of the grey zones to get strategic advantage. Now these problems will persist till the time there are unsettled borders. We need to define the international boundary which is of agreed which is agreed upon by both india and china so that agreement should be there that would be one of the ways of solving this issue which is not going to happen so that is one dimension of his speech was concerning china the other issue that he said was uh, he was comparing it now he was discussing the issue of ukraine russia so he says that conventional means of war you know conventional means are of course important but unconventional warfare is becoming more and more significant. So this could be space, war in the realm of space, cyber warfare, right? Uh, electromagnetic, uh, so electromagnetic, you can say signal technologies and you know the jammers, etc. So aircrafts having the jammers or ability to detect the enemies from far behind. So you don't need boots on the ground, you can attack from anywhere. So these things are emerging as more and more important. So that's what he made the assessment out of the Ukraine-Russia war. Next news. From Rajasthan to Haryana, a pest wrecks havoc in the cotton fields. This pest is known as the pink ballworm. The pink ballworm. So ballworm is the moth larva. Right? So there is this white ballworm which is there in the news. Today we have the pink ballworm, so which is slightly pinkish in color. Right? This is obviously now you know the geography also, Haryana, Rajasthan, Punjab. So this belt it is there. Okay. Now what needs to be done? Right. So this, there is no reference of integrated pest management that I am saying it. So what needs to be done? What steps can be taken? So obviously the farmers to avoid this ball worms we know two things without reading anything we know uh, two things so one is the genetic modified crops like bt uh, cotton so that is there so despite bt cotton bt is supposed to uh, you know bacillus thuringiens is supposed to be pesticide uh, for pink ball worms so this this is ingrained in the genes of the cotton so despite this this is going on so now the BT cotton is not very effective. That is what it means implies. The second thing that farmers of course do is use of pesticide, chemical pesticides. And we know that it is harmful, right? It is harmful to the ecosystem. It is harmful to the good, uh, good insects, good uh, uh, things that are there in the living organisms that are there in the field, which helps the farmers. So they are also affected. And yes, it affects the human health, the soil health, everything. So a more be a better approach, appropriate approach would be integrated pest management practices. So early in the morning, I 
not so early actually i shared with you this pib on integrated pest management now what i want you to do is prepare a short note on integrated pest management its definition um, its policies that we have then approach of the pest management as to what are the constituents of the uh, practices integrated pest management practices let me sum it up so it says that first of all th there is a threshold level up to which the pests are fine right so integrated pest management says that we need to have an integrated viewpoint we should not resort to use of chemical pesticides in fact that should be the last case resort so first it says is there should be a threshold level beyond which if pests are there then it is harmful so that threshold has to be defined and of course you need to monitor it right uh, so after that only action will be taken then it says that we can engage in preventive cultural practices for example certain pre preventive measures uh, such as crop sanitation could be used or cutting of uh, leaves which are already infected which can spread so those things should be done so acceptable pest levels preventive measures and monitoring these three are more or less similar then what then the next step could be mechanical control don't use chemicals mechanically for example set up barriers or hand picking of the uh, pests removing them establishing traps so whatever mechanical measures are there that should be put in place the next approach could be biological controls for example there are some microorganisms there are certain things which are naturally available which are harmful to the pests so use them so use beneficial insects that eat or uh, pa parasitize target pests lizards are a good example right obviously lizard is not an insect okay so that could be used then we have uh, biological insectis uh, insecticides like bacillus thuringiensis pt and to more pathogenic fungi right ne some same type of nematodes are there so these things these things could be used so biological based or ecological techniques next is last case resort is responsible use of chemical fertilizer uh, chemical pesticides some of the names are given now you see it it doesn't say chemical fertilizers now imagine you are writing your answer you can say responsible use using it responsible use okay so i want you to prepare a short note on this it's very easy to get the definition what are the key constituents why we need it if you can do it your answer is ready uh yes given more emphasis to the opinion section today actually a lot of good things were there so and still additional work was required this now uh, rti activist you know uh, so what i want to discuss here is uh, the significance of rti or uh, transparency in governance so rti we know right to information act this provides us a statutory right to citizens to seek awareness about the government actions and the government is obligated to provide that information even if it is uncomfortable to them so rti this rti activist it provided you know it see sort uh, plans of the aap government on uh, planes to be uh, the, for elections you know the hiring of planes and when they were required so it came to light that it was using it for a uh, mr arvind kejriwal aam aadmi party so delhi chief minister to be ferried from one place to another during election activities and not in punjab but elsewhere so this is a malpractice that is going on right so this is a malpractice so this has come to light because of rti so that's the significance so rti of course i'm not analyzing today but rti brings in a framework for transparency with transparency people get aware right so people get aware they participate now questions will be asked in the media uh, questions will be asked by the public so participation and when questions are asked the government is held accountable right so this is the framework transparency participation accountability and one of the reasons why we need the rti okay so day 2 of rail roko going on 498 trains affected 227 cancelled now imagine i am talking from ethics case study point of view 
Imagine uh, you are the person in your district, all this is happening. How will you deal with this situation? The national cost is being borne. Uh, people are getting affected, inconvenienced. At the same time, this is a politically powerful uh, cloud. How will you deal with this situation? What are the options available to you? Describe the merits and demerits of each of the options. And at lastly, say what action would you, which option is the best among the options that you have. Now we come to the next news. Madhya Pradesh pushed to include their Basmati in the GI list, geographical indicators list, could harm India globally. Okay, there are, there are not two ways of looking at this news. So one is, how will it affect India globally? Right, so that sh should trigger in your mind. And the other thing is, uh, about questions about GI, like who issues the GI list? So it is the it's associated with the World Trade Organization's TRIPS program, right? So it's associated with this. What is geographical indicators? So there are these goods and service, go, uh, you know, this uh, agricultural produce or something that is manufactured, for example, Darjeeling tea, which is associated with a particular geography. Their uniqueness is associated with the geography which they belong to. So these items are called as GI uh, list or GI tags. So these items get those GI tags. tags. So this is the trademark and it provides the place which is marked as a GI tag as greater uh, economic value, greater qualitative value. So it's perceived important. Okay, so that is one. So GI definition, uh, who issues uh, GI, so that is there and which of the items are part of the GI list? So that is again um, something that needs to be done. I had opened that GI list thing. Okay, I don't find it. So that you can find which all items are there. If you just type GI list India, you will get the list. Okay, now how is it of concern to India? So see, Basmati traditionally it is associated with rice spanning the Indo-Gangetic plain, right? So in this and the Ganga region, so seven states, particularly in this region. So Haryana, Punjab, Rajas, parts of Rajasthan, Himachal, Jammu, Kashmir, so those areas. So it, the rice that grows over these areas, this which is that long strand of rice and has some as an aroma, as a fragrance, so that is known as the Basmati rice. It is, it has to be from the Indo-Gangetic plains. Now Madhya Pradesh is saying that we can also, we are also making rice, which is Basmati rice. We are also able to grow it. Okay. Now if the Madhya Pradesh rice gets the status of GI, stating that uh, it has the same qualities and features as the rice over here, that would mean that uh, Pakistan, although some Pakistan uh, regions are part of this uh, area. So Pakistan, um, China, so they can use the Basmati tag and eventually it will affect India's interest, right? India's trade interest because China is the biggest and they'll, they'll have no difficulty in matching the qualities over here. So in fact, they are banned of, from using the term Basmati or Basmati-like terms. So they have been banned. So this will naturally affect India's interest. Okay, Uttarakhand. Uh, so those of you who are preparing for Uttarakhand uh, exam, a uh, PCS, um, I for I have seen the pre paper. There's a lot of static and a lot of uh, geography related questions and history related specific to that uh, Uttarakhand. So those are asked. But anyways. So we ha here have an advertisement which tells us about the government initiatives, etc. So this you should keep an eye as to what is the government doing. Besides this one and anybody actually is preparing, um, the Uttarakhand government is building a Manas Khand temple circuit and it covers the following temples. We should have a basic idea of these temples. Okay. So it, a, a temple at Almora, Pithodagar, Bageshwar, Right, so all these temples, we should have a basic idea. Now, why are, why is it calling it Manas Khand? So we did a bit of a, a Google over here. So Uttarakhand is 
you know having this uh, two parts okay this, this is also not there so just a second yeah so uttarakhand has these two parts so it's a combined region of kedarna kedarkhand and manaskhand right so there are two uh, parts to this according to the puranas and the ancient hindu text so it's, it's these temples in the manaskhand region that are being referred to okay Uh, this is not, uh, I mean, exam point of view, but otherwise it's important. You know, the Nepal virus, it has a very, those who are infected, they get hemorrhage and um, chance, mortality rate is very, very high. Right, so mortality rate is very high. Now, Nepal virus is there across the country, it is said, uh, except for some parts of Jammu and Kashmir, it is across the country, but it's just that we do not, we are not aware of it. Well, Kerala, because in the there is a history, so we know that yes, Kerala has it and more measures are taken in Kerala. Now here, there is a family, the father died, but the child survives. Child and the uncle survives with treatment. They were on the ventilator, somehow they managed to survive. So this may become a case study and may be a way forward as to how curative treatment, that is treatment to cure the patient shall be done with Nipah. The government is saying accurate, timely diagnosis is required uh, and uh, they also so talked about isolation and all these practices uh, with reference to Nipah, not mentioned in this article. Political news is just that I was interested in reading all this, not important from your point of view. Okay, maybe these two we can call it. So one is the women's reservation bill. It's a women's reservation bill. We all know one third of the seats to be reserved in the Lok Sabha as well as the state legislatures. Now we were saying that women's reservation bill obviously has a federal character. It has a federal character. Uh, that is, it required a special majority at the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha in the parliament as well as half of the state legislatures had to give approval for the law because even the state legislature the, the reservation is there so there is a federal element to it however uh, this uh, women's reservation bill has gotten the special majority only at the parliament and they said that this is now a law president has signed it and so it has become a law the officers are saying who are responsible for bringing in the law they are saying that the aspect of say states are not concerned uh, because I don't agree with this it because they say that no increase or decrease of the states or representation of the uh, states are affected it is only providing reservation to women in the state legislative assemblies okay so this is now known as the 106 constitutional amendment act 106 so these terms may be important for your prelims law panel favors enabling efirs to tackle delay right so efirs so there are problems in uh, so, uh, you know people registering firs and all so why not do it online basis so efirs are allowed in case the identity of the accused is not known so there is a proposal not allowed there is a proposal in certain states ut there is a provision of filing efir and daily diary report so UT Chandigarh is and their option is there. Okay, now we come to the editorial opinion section. Mm, yes, first news is Kaveri's people. Kaveri's people, who are these Kaveri's people? Kaveri flows through Karnataka, southern part of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu and then into the Bay of Bengal. So, so Kaveri's people are both the people of the Kannad and the Tamil people. Okay. Now what has happened is that uh, Supreme Court had created a formula. There was a dispute between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. So they created a formula as to how the water shall be shared between the two states. How much will Karnataka retain with itself? Karnataka is the upstream state. 
while Tamil Nadu is the downstream state. So water comes from Karnataka to Tamil. So how the water sharing would be done? So formula was established. But now since this is the drought year, El Nino year, right? So in so this condition, uh, obviously the Karnataka is concerned. They feel that more water is required. It affects the livelihood and interest of the Karnataka people. So they are unwilling to part with the water according to the norms, according to the formula created by the Supreme Court. Right. So, so that's, that is the basic issue over here. And therefore there is this protest and everything going on in the southern part. Okay, so I have told you what is happening. Now let us go deeper from quality point of view. Let us look at this. So all the states, all states, you know, especially after the State Reorganization Act, um, all the states, they were supposed to be interstate river waters. River, same river, but passed through multiple states. So in consequence of this, um, Interstate River Water Disputes Act was, you know, made by the parliament. And this was in consonance of the Article 262 of the con uh, Constitution. So Interstate River Water Dispute Act. So it basically provided a framework that is when there was a dispute between the upstream and the downstream states sharing river. So how that resolution of the dispute would take place. So an inter-state inter river water dispute act was passed by the parliament, which provided for a framework of settling dispute between the states on matters of river sharing river water. So it said that in case of a dispute, there shall be an establishment of a tribunal and the verdict of the tribunal will be final. So the decision would be final. It cannot be challenged in the Supreme Court. No, no court. It can. It cannot be uh, challenged. So interval state river water disputes. Act. Okay. Nevertheless, these are actually challenged and they go to the Supreme Court. Okay. So they go to the yeah, tribunal is there. The tribunal primarily comprises of engineers and uh, they decide as to how much water will be shared between the different states. Now to implement the verdict of this tribunal, management authorities are established. So all of this, you know, you can read on this in on the Interstate River Water Disputes Act on the Wikipedia page. I find this better than the PRS actually. So, so one is about the tribunals. This comes from... Um, I, can't find the section right now, read section. Uh, so th there is this tribunal will be established and then there will be establishment of authorities which will implement the verdict of the uh, tribunal. So this is from the section 6A of the Act. So management authority to implement it. So formula established by tribunal, management authority will do it. So with Kaveri, we have the Kaveri Water Regulation Committee. And in this case, in the case of Kaveri, uh, since the tribunal thing was challenged in the Supreme Court, Supreme Court established its own formula in 2018, five years after. So, you know, so it, it, the newspaper says so, 2018. Okay, so now this Kaveri Water uh, Regulation Committee is the management authority. Okay, so this thing is covered and this is common for all the states. This, I've also told you the framework of the Interstate River Water Dispute Act. So overall, I have told you. Now, this this part I'm going to cover. Okay. Now you see when they, when it comes to water, right? The, the uh, riparian, the upstream state has an advantage. They make the flood, dams, etc. They may say that we are not giving the water to the uh, lower, the downstream states. So this is not, obviously not correct, especially and this especially happens during the time of the uh, drought years when the scarcity of water. So in this regard, we need to prioritize sustainable water use practices. That is one thing, sustainable water use practices too, because we have little water and this water has to be shared between the Kaveri's people. Right, they, everybody's interest is there. So, it has, sustainable water use practices needs to be need to be incorporated. There should be principle of equity in water allocation. 
Now, for having principle of equity, obviously, rational water use should be rationalized. Right? Sustainable farming practices, sustainable industrial water use practices, uh, uh, recycling of the grey water, waste water. So, so those things can be added in your points. Right. So again, this is a different dimension we are going. Okay. Now, the one issue that I have stated. Other thing is. These management authorities which are there, and typically with any any of these water man, you know what water, water departments are there, they are run by engineers, civil engineers, structural engineers. So they are dominated by these, and I would say not say dominated. Hundred percent of them are these. But when it comes to water use principle of equ uh, equity, we should have people from other fields also. We should have hydrologist. We should, you know, there is a dime, there is a viewpoint that uh, obviously there is a wat river water that is flowing on the surface. There is a river water that is flowing beneath the surface of the earth. The groundwater, so that water is also there. Subterranean channels are also there. Hydrologist will tell you better than the civil engineer, right? So hydrologist, there is an economic viewpoint on water, how it is used. So economist should be there. Agri scientist should be there. So their viewpoint should be taken into account. Farmers should be there, industrial ex industry bodies, civil society. So this group management authorities should be made more inclusive. Something like this was recommended by Mihir Shah committee report. Right. So I want you to read Mihir Shah today. I'm not sharing this, but uh, I want you to read Mihir Shah. If you Google, you'll get the points. And this is about how the water governance would take place. Okay, so this was about interstate river water disputes issue. Uh, law is not enough. This is about the Women's Reservation Act, 106 Constitutional Amendment Act, Nari Shakti Vandan Adhiniyam. Uh, this article will just, um, you know, it, uh, uh, so we will discuss this. In our milieu, Nari Shakti, this law is a largest, it's like a charity rather than a, rather than the right women have been denied. So this is one way of looking at it that has been like a charity that has been done. So that is there. And the second is like this thing was opposed previously. Some of the, some of the views have been mentioned in this article. So we have a viewpoint of uh, constitutional amendment, uh, sorry, uh, the constitution assembly. So there was uh, women were, you know, this women reservation for women was discussed in the constitution assembly. And one of the members, women members, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, she said that women reservation should not be provided because it affects their self-esteem. So it will weaken their self-esteem and also threatening the goal of national unity. Second one is that uh, there was this 1974 report concerning uh, towards equality report. So there is this report which pointed out that women's representation in work, in health, education, political participation, participation is low. Even then, they did this. They did not make a case for reservation for women. So this thing came up that should there be a reservation for women, and they denied this. Something like age of consent, you know, something similar, you can think of it. Okay. Then some of the members of the constituent assembly also felt that if women become parliamentarians, etc. So it will affect the found it will affect the value system of the Indian civilization. So that was also one of the viewpoint. Okay. Next article. It's just that, you know, you might think that I'm missing, not skipping one of the articles. I decided to read only. Okay, this is important. Uh, the other one is also important about the personality rights. Household borrowings surge in 2022-2023. Higher leverage could have implications for financial system borrowing surge that is people are borrowing more okay so this is a very important topic from gs3 point of view uh, no, 
we hardly ever talk about it from the newspaper point of view so i have actually take a, taken a screenshot and saved it for future reference i would advise you to do the same okay well, now it is too cluttered so these are the points right so yeah so the article starts with a uh, report released data released by the reserve bank of india it says that household savings household savings that is the people who are saving so this is at a low it is at 5.1 percent of the gdp so this is a multi-decade low on an average this household savings that is how much a household is saving is seven to eight percent of the gdp in the covid years this was uh, at 11.1 percent and then 10.9 percent so this was pushed up because people were not in a position to spend so the money was automatically saved so 5.1 percent it has come down household uh, savings um so so yes so what is the reason why the saving is less so according to the uh, rbi the main reason is there is a sharp rise in liabilities people are borrowing so people are borrowing for their consumption there is credit driven growth in private consumption and this is not particularly good so credit driven growth in house vehicles etc so that is there now with this data i'll tell you one flaw that uh, borrowing for housing is there for vehicle is there that's fine but we should also know about the income groups and uh, you know that segregation is important how about the poorer households so how how are they affected how much of their household saving was there you know because that would tell us about how much distress is there in that segment likewise rural and urban so that segregation is important for these to be relevant anyways these are points that you can write in your answer if a question is asked okay now why is this of concern to uh, us right why is this of concern so you see the household savings if anybody saves money what where do you put it in fd pension fund all those things so savings result in let's say pension funds and fd so this money is further used to lend so let's say industrial sector or somebody else or the government uh, uses this money to create infrastructure industry looks at creating new factories so then for expansion so with the so with the decline in the savings there is less savings overall in the economy less savings mean less uh, less money for capital formation so there is a decline in gross capital formation and we need a sustainable increase in gross capital formation for rise of gdp for sustained rise of gdp if the gross capital formation comes down so the rate of growth of gdp will also get affected right not gdp will not come down the rate of growth of gdp will come down so for gdp to go up of course we need expansion capacity creation expansion then only the gdp grows up otherwise gdp will only be maintained so that that is the issue so for this expansion obviously capital capital formation is required second we see borrowings are there so this means we have a, we have a debt ridden society if it is from the poorer sections it is not a good sign right it is also not good for the banking sector so if people are not able to pay up so overall this is not a good sign for the broad economy credit driven growth in private consumption is not a good sign in the absence of a sustained growth of household income if the income is not increasing then it's not a good sign okay we move to the next article so anil kapoor the famous celebrity and he has this famous way of saying chakas right so he went to one of the high courts i don't know which one maybe bombay high court he goes there and uh, he say uh, he's he raised an issue that there was this ai application uh, which was using his chakas as for promotional activity so he went to the court and he said that uh, my personality rights the way i say chakas the way i use this expression it amounts to endorsement and uh, oh, it's being leveraged by a private sector and it is affecting my income 
and he won the case that this now jakasting can only be used by anil kapoor now there are various other celebrities also like amitabh bachchan so amitabh bachchan has its has its own uh, personality rights which are also referred to as publicity rights shahrukh khan also has it in fact uh, if you notice make a payment i don't know which of these upi thing so it you know it thanks us for making the payment in amitabh bachchan's own voice so it's the use of his voice it's the use of his way of saying right and if it is done without consent obviously there is an unethical aspect to this and it affects the uh, the celeb overall so this we are going to discuss this is a very uh, this seems to be an important topic from gs2 all to going by previous year no but sometimes who knows some question like this is asked we have to be prepared okay you need to be able to define personality rights you can easily get it from wikipedia so rights for an individual to control the commercial use of their identity name image or other unequivocal identifies the deep voice of amitabh bachchan chakas or anil kapoor like that okay now what are the uh, what is the defense for this so it affects this is very much required because it affects the right to livelihood right to uh, celebs to get endorsements right it gets affect if the private players do it they by themselves then it their interest is affected okay uh, the companies do not take consent so consent is required in using their property it's their intellectual property and uh, it may give that uh, impression that the celeb is actually authorized buying of that products celeb recommends the use of that product so without his con- consent if the, that is done that is also wrong right so these are the points these i have summarized okay uh, some of them i have taken from this article over here okay and for this he makes a case anil kapoor makes a case uh of of a us based judgment which is known as vana white case versus samsung electronics so samsung elect i shared this uh, with you on the telegram so that is this is the reason why i shared so in this what happened was that uh, samsung came up with some advertisement using uh, in which there was a robo which had uh, features similar to vana white vana white is a you know popular tv personality tv celeb in the, and uh, with this game game show, game show host so she went to the court and she uh, won the case okay right so she used this case now you see a question may be asked about vana white case so, ra- rather than personality rights the upsc may ask you vana white versus samsung or the uh, vana white case and what are its implication on personality or publicity rights something to that effect may be asked uh, or without any reference of personality but, but just this much like for example there was a question about mac bride commission and students were ha- having no clue about from where it where it came so these things we should keep an eye on okay now obviously if there is something good there may be certain concerns also okay so in the vena white versus the samsung case itself the one of the judges had made a remark that uh, uh, you, you know it is uh, amounting to over protecting of intellectual property he says that there should be a liberal ap- approach towards intellectual property because uh, it hinders creativity and uh, overall whatever we have today is an accretion aggregation of various things uh, that is combined together and innovated so over protection will stifle the creative forces so it's supposed to nurture so that is one of the cases that is made then we have the case of uk so in india's case strict uh, viewpoint has been taken like this expression cannot be used in fact not very sure if this word itself cannot be used without the consent of the celeb which would, which would of course be wrong because nobody has monopoly over the language right jakas is a common word awesome it which meaning awesome okay so in uk they have uh, they, they say that you can use the pers- per- person's uh, intellectual property but at this till the time uh, till the time it does not give an impression that celebrity has um, endorsed that product 
So till the time it does not give that impression of a celeb has endorsed that product and is telling the people to buy that. So till that time it is fine. There may be goods where, you know, things where Anil Kapoor t-shirt, t-shirt is there. Somebody has printed Anil Kapoor's photo saying Jagas. So that is permittable. But now in India, this may, this should not be permittable according to this judgment. Right. So that's the basic thing because a t-shirt with Anil Kapoor saying Jagas on, on one's, uh, one wearing it, it doesn't amount to giving an impression that Anil Kapoor has endorsed that brand. It could be with any celeb or any painting. So that that is what is overprotection of intellectual property. Next is Gandhi and Ambedkar, then and now. Gandhi and Ambedkar, the main thing was 2015 when the main space question was asked. So it basically said both were uh, inclined to the issue of untouchability, they wanted to address this issue, but they had differences as well. Okay, so so the basic thing is both obviously were inclined, both worked towards it, but they had disagreements and these disagreements have to be enumerated, which I'm doing it right now. So Gandhiji, uh, you know, he, we all know the non-cooperation movement, the civil disobedience movement in, did this, but in between the period of the movements like 1920s, 1930s, like quit India 1940s, in between period, he engaged in reconstruction work in which he worked on social reforms, untouchability, right? So social evils that are there, that on that he worked. So particularly 1920s to 30s, he worked on the origin movement, which is about uh, empowering the untouchable community addressing the issue of manual scavenging etc he called the dalits as harijans like the ones who are the children of the god and his approach was to empower them and come to the level with caste hindus the upper caste hindus basically caste hindus means upper caste hindus so this Gandhiji believed in trusteeship model Trusteeship model means that uh, in this case, it means the person who has a lot of resources or maybe the people who are well off or people from the higher caste, they should be mindful of the people who do not have things. So the people who are well off, they are the trustees of resources and they should ensure that the well-being of all com- sections of the com- community is done. So trusteeship model can also be summed up with his ideology of Sarvodhya or Sapka Uday, right? the growth of all. So that was his mindset. He was an orthodox Hindu. He believed in the Varna system. He did, he did not deny the Varna system outrightly. He was very much in favor of the Varna system, the classification of society based on the Varna. But it should be not on the basis of birth, but on the basis of occupation and merit. This was something similar to what Dayanand Saraswati used to say. Okay. Um, then we have... Uh, okay, so let's stop over here. Let's stop here. Now, wait, let us look at the what Ambedkar would do. Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. So here he, he was about empowerment. He believed in the Varna system should be there, although he did uh, oppose the inhumanely practice of untouchability and manual scavenging. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar himself was from the, the lower caste and he advocated annihilation of caste, complete removal, revocation of the caste system. He tried to take direct action. He tried to take direct action, mobilize political mobilization of people from the lower caste or as you would call Bahishkrit outlawed right so Bahishkrit he formed political agitations uh, in the Bahishkrit Hitkarni Sabha Bahishkrit Sabha he formed a paper to raise awareness about this issue so this he collaborated with the British government uh, Gandhi would do non-cooperation civil disobedience he cooperated with the uh, British on this issue and uh, he also suggested that within the Hindu re- religion, the caste system is quite deeply entrenched. So he suggested that people should move out of the Hindu fold and embrace Buddhism. So he himself moved towards Buddhism 
and along with him many of his followers so that was his agenda gandhi ji this was simply not acceptable leaving the hindu fold okay now as i told you that gandhi uh, bear ambedkar dr bear ambedkar worked with the british and based on his view points the british in one of the round in the last you know in the round table conference they gave the macdonald award and uh, in that they made a case for separate electorates for the depressed classes so gandhi it was not acceptable to uh, gandhi ji and uh, gandhi ji said that uh, instead we should have reservation for the depressed classes so this was the pune pact which eventually came into being so he was more into pr promote hindu unity while dr b r ambedkar would say that leave the hindu fold join buddhism because if you want to move out of the issue of caste so that was his mindset by the way annihilation of caste is a paper is a is a speech actually which uh, written speech uh, by dr b r ambedkar next we come to the uh, explained section i am not doing this today okay uh, so this i'm not doing the uk's beloved 300 year old uh, there is one tree sycamore gap tree so between this two ridges there is this tree this tree is 300 years old it is very iconic to the british culture the robin hood movie also that tree is there so this was felled by a 16 year old boy okay so this is part of the hadrian wall right so it which is a world heritage site and it was called the frontiers of the roman empire even though it may have gone beyond this okay so that's it hadrian wall associated with british maybe for pre this may be important moving to the and maybe the last one from exam point of view so the threat from illicit trade so we have all this uh, data right uh, was hoping to get more facts on illicit trade that i didn't get but uh, otherwise we still have facts and which we can use for answer writing okay so let me read so there is this fic ficci report uh, for the corporate sector actually so they said the overall score of illegal economy illegal economy means uh, activities done by a organized crime syndicates like uh, smuggling arms arms trade drugs um, right um, money hawala trade all the bad things so illegal economy in india uh, is higher than average of 122 countries so we rank poorly in terms of illegal economy in the country this indicates that various criminal markets have a major impact on india's economic structure okay now what i am going we are going to do is how this what is this illegal economy you have a big basic idea uh, how is it of concern from economy point of view and in economy internal security and adversely affects the people at large okay so just we use this information over here so organized crime syndicates their activities are basically uh, aimed to earn money but by illicit means right so that is the basic uh, thing but earn money is the base, main goal so they in that way they engage in smuggling arms uh, trade drugs trafficking all those things okay now when all this happens it naturally affects the people extortion and everything it affects the people in a very very negative way so that is there now when this act activities are done these organized crime syndicates they make money right so they make money but this money is unaccounted for because this is through illegal economy so black money is there involved over here now to use this black money this black money has to be made white so for this they engage in money laundering and round tripping of black money so series of transactions are made in such a way that this black money becomes white legitimized money and this money then is again so how money laundering affects money laundering again uh, goes back the money goes back to the organized crime syndicates in a clean form this is again used to finance 
wrongful illegal economy which again affects the people so according to un estimates un odc united nations office on drugs and crime so they said that when india's economy was at 3 trillion dollars in 2021 the money laundering that happened was dollar 159 billion roughly 5% of gdp this is the main fact that we have from here and all this affects the safety and security of the nation. Of course, it affects the safety and security. Okay. So, yes. Now, imagine arms. Who uses the arms? Who uses arms? Terrorists, militants. Whom are they used against? The people, the military, the police. So it's an internal security risk. Writing agitations, who they, these people use it. Right. And when smuggling takes place, it affects the overall uh, the well-being of the people's uh, smuggling of drugs. So it's fine. So you see how this how many branches we can make out, take out from this particular topic. And this is uh, your GS3. If it is asked for an organized crime, it will center around these issues. So the connection type questions are asked. Okay, economy section. USD 83.04, oil is at 97.03, okay. Infra output grows 12.1% in August, fastest in over a year. And infra output, how do we know? Uh, from the core sector, right? So core sector has grown to well in 12.1%. Now, what ha factors happened? So it's nothing to be very happy about. It's basically... Because of this drought-like scenario, because of the deficient rainfall, more requirement of electricity was there, coal was burnt, so thereby more infra output was there. Fiscal deficit at uh, August 10 touches 36%. Nobody is going to ask you. And uh, this was touched 6.43 lakh crore. Okay. Uh, what, uh, so well, basic thing you should know is that according to the FRBM, the latest for this budget, the fiscal deficit target is 5.9% of the GDP. Okay, so this concludes today's news analysis.